and welcome to Wrong Way! And today we'll be unboxing a mini e-bike with dual wheel drive from Voro Motors. The e-move Roadrunner. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. And right away also big thanks to Voro Motors for sending me out this unit for testing purposes and also for me to keep. Oh. Thank you. Um, I guess you'll be on the video, Sufja. Nonetheless, I'll be reviewing this thing thoroughly in the future and today we'll be just doing the unboxing. If you're interested in this product, you can also check out the links in the description below. I think there's also some affiliate links available, so you're also supporting the channel by using those links. Anyways, probably it's best to wait for the full review to decide if this product is actually destined for you. All right, let's get on with it. I believe that this e-bike is, or mini e-bike, is now just available in the US, but I'll have to ask for motors if they have any international shipping. Box arrived in fairly good shape, but I don't see any um, sticker on it that it is actually, that there are like batteries inside. No, Ian. 3481 sticker. I'm very picky about that. I don't know if the couriers knew that there are batteries inside, uh, but at least it's fragile. Handle with care, do not trample, keep dry, upward, fragile, but no information about the batteries that are inside. I'm always picky about that, kind of concerning. But I do appreciate the box. We have a TV with scooter flicks, and there you can see also other <laughs> scooters that are available at Vora Motors. So you have the E-Move Cruiser, which is like a long-range scooter, Wolf Warrior, Wolf King, uh, E-Move uh, Roadster. So I guess that's a bit of a nice touch. However, the box has a hole here on the top, on the left, um, on this side, wait, on this side and here. So I guess maybe it should be like double boxed. Let's see how it is from the inside. And let's open it up. Fragile, this way up. What do we get here? Right away we can see the seat. Feels pretty squishy. We have the handlebars here in the front. Can you see them? Yeah, I think you can see them. All right, let's move. Let's get this foam out. That's a big piece of foam. And how can I get it out? Oh, so the handlebars are separated. All right, I get it. Let's get this piece of foam out somehow. Ooh. I always like this kind of styrofoam because it doesn't leave like any marks on the floor. So that's cool. Where's the charger for this thing? That's pretty light. Ooh. Got the scooter out. I'll show it to you in a second, or the mini e-bike. And here we have grips, we have the multi-tool, but do we have a charger? Do we, do we have a charger? Let me forget the charger. Let's see. No charger here. No charger here. So I guess I'll have to write to Voro Motors to send me a charger. All right, so time to assemble this thing. It looks pretty straightforward. Here we have the handlebar with a bit of a stem, styrofoam. Everything is fairly well protected. I don't see any scratches or marks on the scooter or mini e-bike. I just need to put that in. All right, and then I have to screw it in here from the top. See. Oh, okay, so I needed to use this hex screwdriver, I mean hex key, to tighten this up. And now it should be in place. Better tighten this up well, so we don't get any surprises when riding. All right, that looks fairly well inserted. So let's assemble it further. This thing is just so funny. I always wanted to test one of those scooters. Well, pretty much no stem wobble at all. And sadly, one uh, button here is missing. 
<laughs> so I guess that's a problem of the shipping. And is it the turn on button? Yes, it's the turn on button. <laughs> All right. Let me get some tools and rearrange everything here. Love the kickstand too. It's the smallest kickstand I've ever seen, but it seems to work just fine. Alright, so I somehow set it up to my liking. I like the handlebars, they're pretty wide, I think around 60 centimeters. Brakes are also in the right position. And here we have the front light, which is... Oh, oh it's not really powerful, is it? Um, yeah, I'll show you the difference to a unicycle light in a bit, but I'm happy it's still there. They do not blind others though, which is pretty nice. So here, no blinding. Here, blinding. Very nice. We have turn signals and you can also see if they're on. Really love that feature. And you cancel them by pressing another time. Then we have also a horn, which is fairly loud. Here we have the missing button. Maybe I'll find it somewhere in the box later. And what does it do? I think it's... I don't really know. It just turns the scooter on and off. Uh, I don't think, we, just, we sadly have no ignition here, no ignition key, but we do have a key for the battery, which I'm going to, which I'm going to show you later. And here we can select the modes, one through three, and then we can also check different parameters, question mark. Um, I guess it just shows the odometer and trip meter. Okay, so... I guess that's that. Here we can see the mechanism for the folding handlebars. It's really cool actually, better than pretty much anything I've seen before. So you have a button here on the top. You can't see it now, but it's there. So I press on it and then it unlatches and then I can fold them easily, make it smaller. Very nice. And then if you want to relatch it, you have to press on the button again and do, wait, wait, what, what did you do? Yeah, you need to, Put it up like that and lock it in place and pretty much no stem wobble here. On the right side we have a R button and a I button, don't really know what they do, but the thumb throttle looks really nice and responsive, really quick reaction and also like the shape of it so you can also just like hold it on the top here without even using the thumb so it's comfortable for longer light rides i believe uh, another cool thing is that you can set up how high the handlebar is for you so i will probably like a bit of more of a aggressive stance and if you're i know a taller rider or if you like more of a i know comfortable stance then you can unscrew this screw and then is it this cool? Yeah, and then you can have it just higher up. I'll just lock that. By the way, big thanks to Mono Cat's mom. I got these tools from her. That's really nice. And then you have you can have like a more upright, comfortable stance. But I'll probably keep it a bit more aggressive because I don't know that's probably what I'll test out first. Oh yeah, and the grips I found before, they aren't really grips, they are the pegs for the scooter itself, so... And... That should be fine. Also not to over tighten. So let's screw those in now. Alright, so as this scooter or mini e-bike is now fully assembled. I can tell you a bit more about the specs and features of this thing. Uh, we have suspension in the front. Now it's locked out. I can also set up that it's not locked out. For some reason it's saying here that it's ABS, but I think it's just the setting of the suspension. So it's cool we have suspension in the front, but we don't have any in the rear. So I believe it might be not the most comfortable 
vehicle to ride around. By the way, Electric Scooter Academy also has uh, this e-bike now for himself to use, I guess. He also does uh, deliveries, like food deliveries in Los Angeles area. So feel free to check him out. Really cool channel. Anyways, the scooter does have pretty big um, tires for a small micro mobility device anyways. It has 14 inch tires, which should give it a lot more stability than, you know, scooters with 10 or 11 inch tires. When it comes to the battery, it's a thousand watt hour unit, which is bigger than most of the e-bikes, but it's still not, you know, huge by, you know, micro mobility standards. I, sh I think it should get you anywhere around like 50 kilometers, 60. Uh, we'll see about that, which is around 30 or 40 miles. The battery is also removable. It has a key here. So I just turn the key. And then, can I just pull it out? Hmm? Is there an additional button or something? But anyways, with this uh, usually removable web battery, you can just leave it outside and um, charge this vehicle in your home. I'll put it at home anyways. I think it's also pretty small, so I think it's not a big deal to, to keep it at home. We have a XLR port for charging on this side, so nice port, I really like that. And charging will take around 12 hours with a 3M charger, so that's pretty slow. This battery is also sort of low voltage, 48 volts and 26 amp hours. So I don't know, I think they just went for range, really not as the top speed. The controller here is, is here underneath the seat. I think it's a good spot for it. We can also like see it a bit here through the ridges. All in all, like all of the metal quality, like this matte aluminum frame looks really nice. I think it's actually very cool. I also see some improvements from, in regards to prior versions of this vehicle, like the mud guard, the metal mud guard also has a reinforcement metal piece here and it's also longer so it won't just like spray water onto the controller or onto the battery also i think the front mud guard is a bit longer when it comes to waterproofing there is no official ip rating for this thing so that's a real bummer as far as Voro motors is stating it's good for light rain and drizzles um i don't know i hope they would make something more serious like an ip rating in the future I know that aluminium can't rust, but there are several holes in the frame, like here, here, and I don't know, probably these are the ones that are most important. And then water probably can't get out because there is no holes on the bottom. It's oily. <laughs> so we have the pegs like on the motorcycle here. I, I like that. We have a lot of room here, so maybe I'll put some... Oh, actually, yeah. I think if I have a broken EUC, maybe I'll just do that. I think that's not safe, but hey, it fits. <laughs> I can definitely see myself putting some grocery bags here, or, you know, a, a speaker, or maybe even potentially, I will just like get this battery out and just fill it up with batteries and make this thing ridiculously fast because as it is now it goes around 55 kilometers an hour or like uh, 60 uh, kilometers an hour which is around 35 miles or 40 miles an hour i think 35 is the the real number here uh, and and it reaches its speed by dual motors so this is actually very rare, I think, in the e-bike world. We have a motor in the front, which is a 350-watt 3, hub motor, nominal power, 350 watts. And in the back, we have a 500-watt nominal power motor. So together, they're producing, um, well, whatever it is, 850 watts of nominal power. I think this will make this scooter quite zippy, but I think it's generally made for going at high speed, not really for acceleration. I don't know, we'll have to see. I like the seat for now, seems comfy, but I guess we'll have to see how it is when riding outside. 
like the kickstand, I like the frame, I like the design of it. Um, I don't like that the you know, button is gone and, and you know, I'll have to ask the guys to send me the charger. So probably you'll have to wait a bit for you know, the full review. I also like the lighting, especially in the back. In the front could be better. I'll definitely put some additional lighting on the handlebars, like a shred light or something else. But in general, I'm stoked to try it out. I think it looks very fun. And maybe it's just like the you know, nice combination between a um, e-bike and a scooter. Maybe I could also put some, I don't know, I just have so many ideas for you know, modifying this thing and you know, taking it out for groceries or other stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hyped. So I guess this is the unboxing. General first impressions are kind of nice, really like it. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Whee!